Pleasure House. No, it's not some weird adult film store. It's a brewery located in the northern section of Virginia Beach. The founders all started as home brewers, one school teacher, the other a bartender elsewhere. Kevin was brought on as a former IT worker. Over a few beers at the local pub, the idea just took off. The three members have no investors. It's a totally self-funded operation here. The name came from a tavern located on Pleasure House Road, not far from the brewery, which in the 1600s was also home to a brothel. Lookouts would post up on the high dunes across the road, scouting for cops. It's because of this history that the name stuck. A sand-swept shopping mall houses the brew house. It's a super small operation, but that only lends to its charm. Inside, there's plenty of seating, and an excellent and cheap hot dog joint sits right next door, just in case you get the munchies. So let's dive in and try some cold beer. Hey guys, back again for another brew review. Today we are at Pleasure House Brewing in Virginia Beach. So we want to give a big shout out to the staff here for being so accommodating with us today. They actually let us come in before they even open. So we actually get the place all to ourselves. Really cool you guys to do that. It really makes the job a little bit easier. Right now they're offering 11 beers and we're just doing five. The first one we have today is the Shucker Single. And this is a Belgian blonde ale. Yep. So they're fusing two of the styles together to make a to make this one. Ooh. Try that. I'm getting a really present Belgian yeast flavor out of that. I think it's really good. That's but really good. That's like a really nice balance between a blonde ale and a Belgian beer. That's really good for only five and a half percent. It definitely has a yeasty character and smell to it. Ugh. That's really good. It's a really easy drinking yeah. beer too. It's a really tasty beer for something that's low alcohol. Just out of uniqueness and the way it tastes and the way it fuses everything together, I give it a four. I'm gonna say I give it a four and a half. I really like what they were doing here. And they really, they did a nice balance of both beers. And I've never had anything like this. It's good. Yeah. It's really good. And I like Belgian beer, one. so maybe that's why I gave it a little bit more. All right, so the second beer we have is called the Rudy Inlet, and this is a... Imperial IPA. 75 IBU. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's definitely... A very strong hop character right up yeah, front. Yeah, it's bitter. It's strong. It's only 8.1%, so alcohol is fine. Very hoppy. Very hoppy. This tastes more bitter than I feel like the IBUs would suggest. But it's, it's it finishes very smooth. I kind of dig that one. It's yeah, got that it's real good. piney uh, bite to it. Yeah. Yeah. Reminiscent of like West Coast style beers. Yeah. Definitely, that's, definitely that's really, really piney. If you like double IPAs, this yeah, is this really is actually really quite like good. I'd give that a four for sure. Yeah? Yeah. I, I actually really like this one. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a four as well. Even though it's not the style of beer that you would normally drink. It's not what I normally like, but um, it's so smooth that it almost, I almost don't care. Yeah, which speaks a lot. It's really well, the beer it's well done. It's well done. It's well brewed. That's good. Good job. Good job, that was, guys. That's a good one. So the next one we have is Mellow Currents. So this is a collaboration with a meadery around here, um, and they use black Currants, anyway. Those are raisins. Yeah. And so, honey as well. Honey. It's actually a Hefeweizen though. That raisin plus honey and a Hefeweizen, I don't know. Definitely a cool experimental beer right there. Let's try this. I, mm. All right, come on. Okay, okay. So mm. this one, yeah, right? I'm getting um, a little bit of a Robitussin-y. Uh, I get a straight uh, cough. Cough syrup? Yeah, like the yeah. the the, lo the uh, like a lozenge. Yeah, that you <laughs> that you <laughs> that you suck on. Yes. Yeah. When you have a cough, I'm definitely That's getting a do. lot of dimetapish. But like after that, there's a little bit of that honey that comes out. It's weird. And yeah, and then you get honey at the very end. What I like about it is that it's dead on with what they what? describe it to be. Once again, it's a nice balance of, of everything. I think I think it's a little imbalanced as far as the Courant goes versus the Hefeweizen itself. Yeah, I think that's overpowering. And I think it's just because that raisin is just such a, has such a bold flavor yeah. that it overpowers everything else. Could be a little bit less Courant-y. 
Current? Current cross. Let us know in the comments how you pronounce that word. Um, I think I'd give it a three. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the three as well. A half of Eisen is so light that when you add something so strong to it, you know, you gotta be very delicate. Next beer is that, let's do that one. Okay. So that one's a Saison. So that is called a light tower. This Saison is aged in Chardonnay barrels. So if you're a big wine fan, this is supposedly super whiny, um, white whiny, dry, traditional, dry and oaky. These are the traditional tastes you would get out of a Chardonnay. That's what it tastes like. It tastes kind of like That's wine. That's a Saison. With wine. With wine. <laughs> yeah. It's like they poured some wine into it almost. Yeah. Those flavors really, really yeah. come out of the barrel. Yeah, very, very, filtered, very, very clear. Clean. I mean, that is, can you see that? It's that like is like really super, clean. super crystal clear. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's like they added wine to beer. And that's exactly yeah. what it tastes like. You still get some of that Saison as well though. Yeah, that's a really good beer for drinkers that come into like a brewery and they're like, I don't like beer, do you have wine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be the perfect Serve them beer. this. This is exactly it. it tastes like wine. For me, uh, again, I'm tasting everything. They're, they seem yeah. to be really good at like nailing, nailing. what their description yeah. is. For me though, I don't like wine a whole ton. Um, but it's so well done, I'm gonna bump it to a four. Would have been a three for me, just on the condition of that it's a beer. But, um, yeah, it'll be a four for me. I agree, I think that one's also a four. I like, um, I like the twist they put on a traditional Saison, and I'm still getting the Saison flavors at the very end. But the Chardonnay is a little overpowering, um, ever so slightly, but I really like the idea of just aging of putting it, wine in it, 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 or aging, aging it in, in, a wine in a Chardonnay barrel, especially yeah. with the Saison because it just it melds really well. It's good. Yeah, very good. Okay, so uh, we've got this guy, which is the Shark Tears Goza. Yeah. So um, the owner was telling us earlier that he actually employs the help of, of the um, ships uh, out here at Norfolk and they scoop up salt water, right? And then they bring it back to him and he's got a solar powered, I guess dehydrator kind of thing going on for the salt so that all the water will evaporate and what's left is literal sea salt. You can't get any more sea salty and authentic than what's in this beer. And then they just put it in however they do it and, and that's what they use. Very salty history. Bazinga. That's like a sour punch to the face. It's, it's like a really slightly yeah. salt watery kind of taste at the back. It's weird, it's like it's like straight goes up and then all of a sudden you get Pow, like, you pow, get like, pow. Like you're okay, so let's let's clarify. Yeah. It's not like you're drinking legit salt water. No no no. Right? There's just a little bit of salty taste. It's like saltiness to it. For those people that like, um, you know, like sweets and desserts, salted caramel is like a popular thing in cakes and cupcakes. So when you have these like salty desserts, people sometimes think, oh, I'm gonna have salt in my cake. And that's not true. Like you, it just it finishes so nicely because it cancels out the sweetness. So at the very end, it's a very vague saltiness. It's not off-putting. It's just kind of like, oh, that's a nice touch. It's there for that's sure. That's what that is. That's a really interesting taste. But it's very tart. But it's it tart. Is, it is actually done really well. It's nice. That is one good goza. This one's funny for me because uh, at, up, up front, like I immediately was like, no, this is way too sour. But now it's kind of like, I don't know if it's growing on me or I'm getting used to it. Or maybe it's attacking my taste buds. What's the IBU? And I'm dying. What's the IBU again on that? Seven. Seven. There's no hop character to this beer whatsoever. So what would you give that? You know, it's so interesting. Like, I actually kind of dig this. I'm gonna give this one a four, I think. I don't like sour beers. I like sour candy. I don't like sour beers. But um, you know I think what? because of the salt, it kind of balances it out a little bit more for me. A little weird, but it reminds me of lemon heads. Yeah, 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 you're totally yeah. right. It does. It is like lemon heads. But I was you don't gonna get say. Any of the sweetness. I was it's gonna say like, like lemon warheads, but that would be too extreme. Yeah. It's, it's really hard sour. to describe beer, to be honest. Yeah. Now this is, I think, one of their best sellers, or it's become a best seller. And from my understanding, is that this is gonna be one of those limited 
one-time only deals. And yeah, they so realized... it was going to be a limited thing. Yeah. And then people kept buying it, so he thought, well, I might as well just keep, you know, making it. Yeah. And that's kind of how it found its place on the on the core lineup. Yeah. As you can see behind us, there are a ton of cans hanging out here, ready for sale. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's a four. A four and a half. Awesome. Four and a half for sure. Cool stuff. Oh, and by the way, the flight's really cute. The flight is a little house. Cute, right? Like a schoolhouse that you used to draw back when you were five in kindergarten. Like, that's what all houses look like. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's it for us for Pleasure House. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And we'll see you again next time on Brew. Cheers. Hey guys, back again for another brew review. Today we are at Pleasure House Brewing in Virginia Beach. So today. <laughs> the beach has corrupted my sense of smell.